Which consuls do you come from? Is it uh, uh, Lusaka Central? Lusaka Central. Okay. That Aimbe that is bragging today, you sent him to parliament, not to go and start uh, trying to pride himself as if it's an achievement to be a member of parliament. The achievement of a member of parliament is to take your wishes to have them reflected in the laws that are enacted there. That's why it's called the People's Assembly. So when a law is enacted, it is our law that we have enacted. That is our will that has been expressed through our members of parliament. So you don't need any other will. You don't need my brother from Wengwa to come and tell you how to fight corruption. It was already said by the Zambian people through the law that was enacted in parliament. A president is basically just a chief executive of the party. He is number one diplomat to give us a good image to the international community. He is there to make executive appointments in terms of cabinet to advise him on how, for example, uh, uh, policies can be developed and so on. But when it comes to fundamental issues of, for example, allocating funds, he just comes with a proposal to parliament through the minister of finance. The the, the institution that is responsible for appropriating funds is the People's Assembly. So I don't know why, as Zambians, we think that Misaka in Dechirema or Edgar Rungo or those who have held that portfolio are messiahs, they are like a Jesus Christ, that through them we are saved. That is wrong thinking. And that's how come these people have become dictators. That's how come these people have begun to assume a status of being a semi-god because we give them powers they don't have. They are our servants. And the attitude of citizens is that the seventh number one misaka in the HLM. Even for him to go to Namwara to start counting as animals, he's supposed to account to us. Choga unkira gumuzute de gagubarango benizi. Twelganda to Johe Muroa Wabusu. U Johe Muroa Wanini Wafuo. Wauta de Gagutitonde Yangon Beago. Who's interested in your animals? We're interested in cheaper fuel. We're interested in cheaper mini meal. We're interested in chupa cooking oil. We're interested in you making sure that the economy moves in, a, in the right direction. Because you told us you are one of the best economists that you have. Economists that you have. Giving us the formulas on how you can reduce fuel. But your formula, we don't know whether you have got, it has gotten lost or what has happened. We're asking many questions. And that is what we are expecting. So the Miringo saga, basically, as far as I'm concerned, is because colleagues are used in, to lie. Even a noble step that they took to, solve, to save an asset, because there is social media they use to decampaign PF, whenever social media reacts in a negative, they change course and want to look nice. The moment you take leadership, stop trying to look good and behave in a manner that will be approved by everybody. The, the sacrifice only of a leader is to live a lonely life because some of the decisions you make as a leader, even your own wife may misunderstand you, but because it's correct decision, you make it for the betterment of the people. Along the way, they will come and appreciate you. The economy today has improved and the lives of the Zambian people have improved to a point where they can build and so on. Because we had a brave man called Chiruva who told the Zambian people, are you ready to sacrifice? Do you know that you are going to go through pain because we are privatizing? We are liberalizing the economy. That syndrome of depending on government, government, yanganepo, kuzankara kulibe, mkamba nombo kula shitisha kono tuntemba na nshan, nshan, even pamela watuwele pari pamela, ni Chiruva. You understand? He was brave enough to face the Zambian people, and therefore, even when they started going through hardships, they said, no, but President, worry to ever. Today, the economy has been opened up. You don't have to work. I told you that at a tender age, in secondary school, I resolved myself never to work for somebody. I resolved to start to employ. The first job I ever got out of 17 million Zambians or 18 million Zambians was a job that was offered to me by President Rungu through a nomination to become a member of parliament. But because the economy is liberalized and the opportunities have been opened up, I used my innovation to survive through business. You understand? And that must be encouraged. If Mulele and the quite know, you must explain your wealth and so on and the approach that the UPND is undertaking through abusing the law code, you know, that talks about pro properties suspected proceeds of crime. We are going back to the UNIP days 
Filefe ya kutila ma vigilante nga mamu na mshitaka TV. Vaisa TV. Imo mwema headmaster. Mwashile kuhisa kala TV. Nishinga mfola. Those questions are a cake. Because today <coughs> a headmaster can be getting a salary. He can have a, a, a garden at the back of his house. He can have a shop in the market. He can have a farm somewhere. He can even use whatever means of generating income. So we can't be asking ourselves questions starting from the tail end. Before you ask the question at the tail end, you're supposed to establish that that headmaster at his school, there's money that has gotten you know, lost. And to that effect, he signed a, a, on a particular document that eventually did what? Um, got him that kind of money. And now he has bought a TV. You can't just come and say TV ya wamisha ite tumu kwa nisha mepari sararian. Iri anshita ya dipita. Ya ire pamona wa yunipi. And the MMD opened up the economy. That is what made a villager like my elder brother. Who was from his own confession. A very poor. Who had a very poor upbringing. Now be counted among the rich people. Why? Because the Chirubas opened up the economy. They made it possible for anybody to, who has you know, you know, ideas, innovation, to make money. The questions that the Zambian people have been asking, maybe which has gotten him bitter, is how he was able to generate income through the privatization. Is it because of double agency? How was he paid? How much was he paid? Could it equate to the money that he was able to accumulate within a short period of time? And some of the people who were involved in that process have said there could have been something wrong somewhere. All, those are the only questions that are asked. But he has never been, I've never seen that uh, uh, President uh, HH's house has been gotten. He was living here in Sevo Road, next to uh, uh, Dr. Chiruva. Nobody went and said, no, because we suspect something, therefore bring the house, you come and explain. No, that's not what has happened. That house that is living in the one they call, you know, community house. People have asked questions, but nobody has gone to grab it. But today he's using, we don't know what standard that is. That targeting only PF officials, former ministers, former technocrats, PSs and so on, grabbing their properties, abusing the law that property suspected process of crime. They have not even investigated. Nobody in Nama Fesha Iwe, the Kuriba Boman, Nashi Chula Pantu, Baboman Variba Chana evict. How can you evict somebody from a house before they are convicted? What law is that? Because you are innocent until you proven what? Guilty. So, Amiringo, Ama evidence, you on say Arimokoti, through a son evidence, I mean affidavits. So, debating that issue, um, we have debated it, but we are waiting, itching to hear whether Ms. Akainde is going to swear an affidavit whether the vice president will swear an affidavit, whether Musokotwan will swear an affidavit, whether Brian uh, um, uh, Machira is going to swear an affidavit, the attorney general, the solicitor general and others to dispute in court that they never met meaning.